big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. Welcome to the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, November 19th, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. This week will feature a few major collegiate invitational swim meets in the United States, and the Art Adamson Invitational is one of them. Texas A&M Univer University will be hosting that meet, and today in the Finis Monitor, we'll talk to the head coach of the Aggies, Steve Boltman, and one of his top swimmers, Sarah Henry. Let's bring them in now via Skype from College Station, Texas. Hi guys, it's good to see you. How are you today? Great, Jeff. How are you? I am doing excellent. Is the uh, is the pool ready for the big meet? Ready. Moving the bulkheads today. Well, I know. I, uh, unfortunately, A and M had some problems in the past with with bulkhead measurements, but everything's measured. It's all going to be twenty five yards, not a inch over. Nope. That's it'll good. be it'll be right. It'll be set down and everything. Steve, as uh, you know, your head coach of the Aggie women's team, do you have any extra responsibilities because the meet's being hosted at your pool, or are you able to just focus on coaching? Just focus on coaching. We've got a great staff that helps take care of things and helps run the meet, and so I can just deal with what I need to worry about with the team. Well, let's talk briefly about the man the meet is named for, Art Adamson. He was a swim coach for a long time at Texas A&M University. And then he was also uh, a big part of starting a citywide swim lesson program. How long, Steve, do you know, was he a coach at A&M? Oh, 20, 30, 40 years almost. Yeah, it seemed like he had he had many decades there at College what was State. it? 35 to 70, so 35 years. Wow, that is, a, that is a long time. He definitely deserves to have his name on a swim meet. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, now, before this meet was created a few years back, A&M used to go to other pools, like in Houston, for the invitational meet. So whose idea was it for A&M to host something like this? Well, actually, we, we hosted this because for the longest time, we, didn't, we never had a football game this weekend, a home football game. And then all of a sudden, Big 12 decided they were going to start putting football games, even though you know we would historically play Texas either on the Thursday or Friday Thanksgiving week. And so, you know, when we've got a home football game, which we had for four years in a row, there's no way you can host this invite because you never know what TV is going to do time-wise with when the game's going to be. And so we ended up having to go elsewhere, but last year and this year and thankfully next year we don't have a home football game and so we're able to start hosting again and sarah it's a big advantage for you you get to swim at your home pool and also every night you get to go home and sleep in your own bed does that kind of help give you a little bit of a boost yeah uh well i know the walls and i know the atmosphere well uh we're close to home so a lot of my classmates will come out to the meet we have parents who are coming so it'll just be a fun time, and uh, we have some teams coming in tonight and tomorrow, so as they start getting here, start getting the vibes that we have a big meet this weekend, and we're all, we are all getting ready to go. And you've swum very well at this meet the past few years. Uh, once you had the top times in the country, I believe, in the 500 free, 400 IM. Um, is it the environment, or is it something about you know swimming in a big meet the week before Thanksgiving that gets you very excited to swim fast? Well, uh, Steve usually gives us a drop rest, so we went lighter yesterday, today will be light, tomorrow will be like a meat warm-up, and uh, it's just fun, there's no pressure placing, you just do your best, you've been putting in a lot of hard work, and it's fun to, you know, sleep in tomorrow morning, not have to be up at 5.30 for practice, and it just puts energy into you and into the team, and people get excited to see the freshmen swim, and your teammates swim fast and it's just a fun uh fast meet so steve would you say you're you're pretty much resting these girls 
as close to taper as possible, but still, you know, giving them, keeping them, you know, as tired, so tired that they're not going to be swimming lifetime best pretty much. Well, I mean, that we, we will have some lifetime best. I mean, we train like normal through Saturday. I mean, just some good solid training and uh, weights and everything. And then, but it's this week, you know, we drop back. And I feel like doing that, we don't sacrifice the whole season by resting two or three weeks. We just basically rest them for two and a half days. Uh, you know, we did a, a, a light double yesterday with light weights yesterday morning, and then we don't do weights or dry land the rest of the week, and we do singles today and tomorrow. And, uh, you know, just to give them an opportunity not to be tired and sore, and it's an opportunity to swim fast, and most, most of them step up and, and do a great job, and we do get some lifetime best swims. I mean, it. it Every, I mean, I know it's going to happen, but every year it surprises me to see how fast that they're able to get go such a short rest like this. Why? Why do you? Th- Sarah's talked about it a little bit, but Steve, why do you think these ladies are able to to step up and swim fast at the end of November? Well, I mean, I don't know that they're. You know, yes, we've been training real hard, but I don't know that they're really super broken down at this point. Uh, and then just a little bit of rest, you know, I think they're able to step up and, and swim very fast. Um, plus, you know, they get excited about it, you know, and like, like Sarah said, I mean, you, you kind of feed off your teammates that are doing well, and that just gets you pumped up and excited as well. Well, Sarah, this is going to be a great field of athletes that you're going to be racing against, particularly got a team from Stanford coming down. So how does that affect your preparation for the meet, knowing that you're going to be swimming against some swimmers from uh, one of the top teams in the country? I think it uh, allows me to put my uh, plan into place. Uh, When you know you're swimming fast swimmers, it's easy to worry about what they're doing, to want to counteract like moves that they make in the race but it gives us the opportunity to try to stick to our race plan our strategy that we train every single day with steve um and if we mess up then there's not really a big consequence because we still have secs and ncaa's coming up um so it's just practice practice racing fast people practice mentally and physically well, this meet seems like the, the best opportunity for the ladies to get some NCAA rehearsal, correct? Because the SECs is a five-day meet, I believe, and so it's not really mirroring the NCAAs as much as this meet is. So, like you said, if you, if you mess up, you, you've got your lesson learned, and then you can know what you need to do in March. Is, is that a correct statement? Yes, I would. that's exactly right. Um, so, you know, Sarah, you, as I said, you swam fast in November and then a couple times at the NCAAs, you haven't been able to replicate those, to- those times. So now here you are in your senior year, I'm sure you want to go out with a bang and swim ex- extremely fast for the Aggies. So what are you doing now to make sure that you're able to swim your fastest in March? Well, I would say that I've sat down with the coaching staff and we've talked about, you know, why... I have some troubles in March to not swim to my full potential. And physically, day in, day out, I don't let anyone work harder than me, uh, than I do. And so it comes down to a mental aspect. Like, will I be able to calm my nerves standing behind the box at NCAAs and have full faith in what I've put in into the water? Um, and the answer is that in the past I haven't. I get really, really nervous. I get shaky. I get doubtful. And so I just have been really working mentally towards being able to handle my nerves and keep it fun, Um, not put so much pressure on my shoulders that when something doesn't go my way, everything falls apart. So just uh, working mentally and keeping up my physical ability as well. Yeah, I know. Speaking from... Yeah, go ahead. It really hasn't been so much to hold me. It's been, for the most part, just the 500. Because, I mean, she's done very well in the 4IM and the, and the mile. And, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's just been a little bit just that first day. Yeah, that first race jitters. And, and usually at NCAAs, you can't afford to, to have that, that first race go wrong because um, that, that could be the difference between holding a third-place trophy, a fourth-place trophy, or not holding a team trophy at all. 
Yeah, but the, to her benefit and to her strength is she's bounced back where there's a lot of swimmers that first event doesn't go well and they just roll over and don't do well. She's come back very, very strong. Well, we're definitely hoping to, to see that, Sarah. And, and Steve, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the, the Texas women came to your pool and you guys beat them. How does that? Um... I, actually, we, we went over there. Or you went over there, that's right. So, you know, how does it feel to, you know, be able to, to beat Texas, which is another strong team? And, and, and is that rivalry still strong, even though the two of you aren't in the same conference anymore? Yeah, it is. And uh, I mean, obviously, Carol and I worked together for three years at Georgia. And so at first, when, you know, Texas wasn't allowing any of the teams to compete against us, I mean, we talked. We were just like, this is crazy. I mean, two good teams so close together. It's something we needed to get back going again because I mean, everybody wants to have good competition. And so it was great that we were able to start it back last year. And then, I mean, you know, there was some really, really good races again this year as well. I mean, I mean, I think we ended up winning by 30 points or so, but I mean, there were a lot of really good, good races, and, and that's what you're looking for in, you know, beginning of November. Absolutely. Well, you guys have any big Thanksgiving plans next week? I think there's a football game that night uh, against LSU, so uh, uh, they'll be in town, so we'll do that. Just be a matter of planning when, when we're going to do the turkey. And how about you, Sarah? You're staying College Station, cheering on? I am. Cheering on? Uh, my dad's driving from North Carolina tomorrow, and he'll be here for the meet. Um, and then he'll stay for a week uh, through the game and Thanksgiving. So oh, That would be nice. Have, have yeah. a parental unit down for a little home, probably help you with the home-cooked meal. That would be great. Yes. Well, I know there's still a lot of prep for you guys for this weekend's meet, but before we let you go, we want to submit you real quick to the final five. These are five questions we ask all our guests on the Morning Swim Show. <laughs> And Sarah, the first question's for you. If you could trade lives with any swimming celebrity for a day, who would it be? Um, <laughs> Brian Lochte, because I really enjoy shoes, and I imagine that he has many of them. Yeah, I think he has a whole closet of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve, if you could trade lives with any non-swimming celebrity for a day, who would it be? Wow. Non-swimming celebrity. I don't know. I'd try. I'd, I'd maybe be uh, a coach of a different sport just to try that out. Okay. Sarah, other than this current year, what's a year of your life you would like to relive? I would like to relive this last year because uh, I finally have everything together. Uh, I know what I'm doing in class. And uh, it's just been a lot of fun to have a grasp on everything. Yeah, I agree with that. Steve, what's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Um, I, some, some kind of comedy. Um, Animal House, Young Frankenstein, one of the old ones like that. Wow, I never pegged Steve Boltman as a, a comedy movie lover, but that's very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, yeah. All right, last questions for both of you. We'll start with Sarah. What's your favorite season? Um, my favorite season is fall, just because it's a little cooler than the really hot summers you get here in Texas. And everything's new. Uh, you get a new season, um, some new people on the team, and a new semester to start with. You start with 100 <laughs> in your class, so that's fun. <laughs> and, Steve, how about you? I'd say either spring or summer, just because you're over the winter. Not that the winters are too bad here, but uh, definitely like it when it starts warming up. Yep, I agree with that. Texas, Texas summers are not that great either <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us, and good luck in the meet this weekend, Sarah in the pool, and um, Steve, have, uh, have fun coaching on deck. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeff. All right, thank our pleasure. You. And thank you so much for joining us on today's show, and we hope you'll come back to SwimmingWorld.com this week for our recaps of the top college invitationals around the country. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.